On this channel, I document some lessons I come across while building my indie apps. In this video, I want to show you how I took a design I made in Figma and applied it to my live website using HTML and CSS. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step guide. I will just quickly go through the workflow and process. So this was my starting point, a Figma file. I talked about how I made this file in two previous videos. In the first video, I quickly went through how I used Figma to design a responsive landing page for my website. And in the second one, I made a step-by-step -step tutorial to show exactly how I designed the whole website starting from scratch in Figma. So I had components, I had some styles, but they were incomplete. And to handle responsiveness, I made three designs for desktop, tablet, and mobile. I figured out the in-between sizes while I coded. I also talked about making fully responsive designs in Figma using breakpoints in another video. But for this project, this was enough. I had already turned the design into a prototype, so I had a pretty good idea of how the website should look like and how it should function. So basically, I did not start from scratch. I had a Figma file with components and pages and a prototype. I wanted to jump straight into coding. But I decided to first look up how to turn a Figma design into code. And I came across two keywords, developer handover and design systems. Those subjects deserve to be explored on their own, but I decided to keep things very simple. First, I wanted to make a basic design system. Reading a bit on design systems, I realized I had to think deliberately about many things, including typography, color, spacing between elements, components, pages, and more. I shouldn't just quickly decide on colors and font sizes, for example, and wing it as I go, which I did while making this design. I started by copying a simple typography scale. Then I experimented and adjusted it a bit to fit the design. And then I turned it into Figma text styles. And I applied these text styles to every text used in the design and made sure to apply them consistently across all components and all pages. I also limited the color palette to a few colors and I made Figma color styles and again I made sure that every single element has one of these color styles applied to it. I also made sure that the same elements had the same styles across different pages. For example, all the H1 elements have the same text styles and color styles and all the links have the same color styles. If I had used the color picker tool to apply colors, when I later decide to update these colors, I would have to do a lot of work and I would probably make lots of errors. That might confuse me while I'm coding. Now, if I decide to update a color, it will get updated on every component and every element in every page with just one click. I also had to think about the readability of the text. I used Adobe's Colors Contrast Checker to check the contrast ratio between the text and background colors to make sure the text is readable. This made me adjust the color styles slightly for some fonts and adjust the type scale a bit to make sure smaller font sizes are readable. And having color styles applied to every element in Figma made this painless. I also put the assets I used in the design together to easily add them to the code file. I don't have many assets, but this is helpful, especially if the project gets larger. I didn't spend too much time thinking about spacing, just tried to make sure things were, again, consistent. Figma's auto layout makes handling spacing much easier. In this free Figma community file, you can find the final design after making the changes. I started coding with HTML. I laid out the HTML structure for each page, starting with the landing page and focusing on desktop design only at first. After I finished laying out the HTML structure for every single page, I moved to CSS to add style to these pages. To style the pages, I started by setting CSS variables. And I began by setting CSS variables for the styles that I have here in the Figma file. These CSS variables allow my styles to remain consistent as I would refer to these variables when I'm styling elements instead of doing it manually each time I'm styling an element. Instead of referring to specific values, I just refer to these variables instead. This saves time and it makes updating the styles of elements much easier. If I just update the value of the variable, then every element that references it would be updated, just like Figma styles. So I finished styling all the pages for desktop design first, intentionally ignoring responsiveness, as I think my website if visited would be mainly by users on desktop. Then after I finished, I added media queries to target different screen widths. So I started with smaller screens first, 
and I tackled larger screen sizes. Having most of my styles set using RAM units instead of pixels helped a lot, making responsiveness much easier. For very large screen sizes, it doesn't hold up well, but using media queries to update the root font size for larger screen sizes fixed my problems. Figma's inspect panel was a huge help with CSS. It is not a copy and paste solution, but it does help a lot. So by selecting a component in Figma and clicking on the inspect panel, you get the CSS code. And this was always my starting point when I'm working on any component. I didn't use any JavaScript code because I didn't know any at this point. So I looked up some HTML and CSS tricks to be able to do things such as show and hide some elements. Even though I laid out the structure of the HTML before moving to CSS, I found myself jumping back and forth between the two. Perhaps it would have been simpler to just work on both at the same time from the start. And to see how the articles would look like in this design, I just manually added some HTML code for the article. I ran it on a local server and finally I had another prototype, but in HTML and CSS instead of Figma. To update my website's design, I had to find a way to integrate this HTML and CSS into my Jekyll website. Jekyll is a static website generator that I use so that I can write my articles in Markdown. Markdown is a simple and readable way to write text formatted into headers, lists, links and so on without using HTML. Then Jekyll turns this Markdown automatically into HTML for me. Then I can push my articles or the changes I make to my website using a few simple Git commands. I push the changes to GitHub where I host my website for free. When I made this website, I didn't know much about coding. So I used a very basic Jekyll theme called Minima. I already knew somewhat how Jekyll works. I didn't dive too deep into it and I didn't want to because I plan to build my apps and websites using Vue and Nuxt. And I want to focus on that. So I just needed to figure out how to replace some of the CSS and some of the HTML code of the Minima theme with my own code with minimal changes. To integrate my styles, I just added a CSS folder to the assets folder and I added my style.css file inside of it. Now for these styles to be applied, I had to find a way to link all the HTML pages on the site to my CSS file instead of the CSS or the style file of the theme. Jekyll has a folder called includes, which is like components for Nuxt. Inside this folder, the minima theme already had a file called head. This is just the HTML head element that will be included on all pages. So all I had to do is to link this head to my CSS file. And then just by adding this one line, all the HTML pages on the website since they include this head component, they will already be linked to my CSS file instead of the themes. As for adding the HTML code, I had to create some new components inside the includes folder, just copying and pasting the HTML code that I had already written, but breaking it up into components in the includes folder. Jekyll also has a folder called layouts. So each page will be based on one of these layouts or one of these templates. And all these templates are based on the default layout. And you can see inside of the default layout, the head element from the includes folder is included over here using something called liquid syntax. So that is why all the pages will have this head element. So I had to update some of those layouts and add a new ones and add my includes or my components inside of those layouts. I don't know much about liquid syntax. I read a bit about it some time before, but it's easy to follow if you know basic coding. So for example, inside the default layout, I added a rule that checks the URL of the page. And if it is the root page or the home page, then the main image .html component or include will be added to this page. So in every other page, this element will not be rendered. While setting things up in Jekyll, I tested locally on many different browser and many different devices. When I got decent results, I committed the changes and pushed them to the GitHub repo where I host my website on GitHub pages. And in a couple of minutes, it was up and running. Next, I tested the website on every device I could find and made some adjustments. At the time, I didn't find many issues as I had already tested locally first. 
But after using the website for a while, I started noticing some stupid design and code mistakes. I will talk about some of the mistakes I made in another video. I recently made a few extra fixes. So if you visit the website, you might find that it looks a little bit different from the design. Next steps I need to work on is I just need to fix some minor issues when I got the time. Also, this design sorted as a Figma practice. I didn't think deliberately about the design, so I would like to make a more deliberate design at some point. I like to move from Jackal to Nuxt. Nothing is wrong with Jackal, it's perfect for my needs, for a simple website. But I think the more you use a certain technology, the better you will understand it. And since I want to create my apps using Nuxt and Vue, that's where I want to spend most of my coding time. There are also many improvements I would like to add to the website, like adding a search feature, tags, and perhaps a side menu for longer articles. However, I'm currently busy trying to build my first app using Nuxt. You will see how this will go.